Something called the mass defect is not really a defect, but it brings into sharp focus the idea that we're not in Kansas anymore. This is not, nuclear reactions are not like chemical reactions. These are beasts that are very, very different and they don't conserve energy. So what do we mean? We've talked about mass cons conservation. We've talked about energy conservation. Mass conservation means that the initial mass equals the final total mass. If you add up all the masses of the object, you're pushing a, something down a hill, whatever its mass is to start with, with is going to be its mass at the end. If you break it into two pieces with some kind of collision or whatever, the masses are going to be the same. <laughs> you add up the masses and you're not going to lose or gain any mass. Energy conservation. Um, this, this, this is conserved in mechanical, thermal, chemical. So all chemical reactions, including burning, whatever, they're going to conserve energy um, and mass as well. I mean, even if you're burning a log in a fire, that's a chemical reaction. And you say, well, hang on. That mass is not conserved. I say, yes, it is. Because if you add up the mass of the log before you, before you burn it, and then you burn it, but you capture all the gas that's released and all the soot and all the water vapor that's released from it, add up the mass after it's been burned, it will exactly equal the mass of the log before it was burned. There's no, no nuclear reaction going on here. But in nuclear reactions, neither of those things is conserved. Um, because mass can be converted to energy and vice versa through E equals mc squared. So we can take some extra mass and convert it to energy, that's going this way, or we can take some energy and convert it into mass, going the other way. So the, really we have to modify our conception of the conservation of energy by saying that the initial total energy, including the energy of the masses of the reactants, equals the final total energy, which includes the energy of the masses of the products through Einstein's relation e equals mc squared. So concept five, define the binding energy and the mass defect in the nucleus and state the relationship between them. The binding energy is the energy required to break a nucleus into its constituent nucleons. So let's take a look at uh, this lithium atom. It has um, three protons, looks like four neutrons for this particular nucleus. We're going to add some energy to this nucleus and we're going to break it apart into its constituents. Here's the one, two, three protons that are now rolling around on their own and the one uh, two, three, four neutrons. Um, this separated nucleus has a greater mass. And it's true for every nucleus. If you separate it into its components, the components weigh more. The total mass of the components is more than the mass of the original nucleus. And you say, well, hang on here just a minute. Um, do you really mean that? And I say, yeah, I really mean that. That, they, that the mass of this is not equal to the mass of that. And the difference is this binding energy. So uh, binding energy is the energy required to break it into its constituent nucleons. The mass defect is the difference in mass between the components and the mass of the nucleus. So here's how it works. Uh, the binding energy is, delt is defined as delta E naught. The mass defect is defined as delta M, so it's the change in the mass of the nuclear reaction. Uh, the mass defect can be measured either in kilograms or in atomic mass units we talked about before, and the binding energy can be measured in joules or EV, and we'll also talk about something called the MEV. That's a million electron volts. And this is the relationship between them. The binding energy, that's this bit right here, 
equals the mass defect delta m times c squared through Einstein's uh, famous relationship E equals mc squared. That's all it is. So the mass defect is really this bind, we know what the binding energy is, and the, the mass defect is the equivalent mass to that amount of energy, the binding energy. So how much energy is in one atomic mass unit? And we'll use this, if you need this one, we'll supply it so you don't have to memorize it. But this will be useful in several of the problems. So here's the equation that we just talked about. Binding energy, mass defect, and we want to know what that binding energy is for one atomic mass unit, U. So this is the atomic mass unit that we talked about before, U. It was 1.66, remember it was a little bit less than the 1.67 of the proton. Uh, we need to multiply that that's the mass we're talking about, is equal to u. We need to, need to multiply that by c squared. That's um, 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second squared. Um, and I've used the more accurate value of this. Uh, th instead of 3 times 10 to the 8, 2.99792 to get this accurately. Convert EV to joules, and then we're also going to convert EV to MEV. So one more conversion factor, um, one MeV is equal to 10 to the 6 EV, like we talked about before. If you multiply all those numbers together, you get 931.5 MeV. M meaning million, EV meaning electron volts, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. So that's the energy of one atomic mass unit. All right, let's do an example, a real bona fide example, binding energy of the helium nucleus. The atomic mass of helium, helium is this amount here, 4.0026U. Does that make sense to you? Well, it's helium. So if it's helium-4, we've got two protons, two neutrons, each of them is about one atomic mass unit, and so the total of those four is about 4.0026 atomic mass units. Now this total also includes the two electrons, but they just come in at, at about this um, significant figure. The electrons are so tiny, about one two thousandth the mass of the, but they are included in that total uh, atomic mass of helium. And the atomic mass of hydrogen is 1.0078 U. So this guy here, the hydrogen, has a proton and an electron, and its total atomic mass is 1.0078 U. And the neutron mass is 1.0087. And so what we're asked to do in this problem is to obtain the binding energy of the helium nucleus. We're going to take this helium atom and I'm going to break it, add some energy to it and break it into its parts. Um, with the electrons a as part of the whole here that we're including the electrons this time. So this initial mass we're told is 4.0026, that's what we're given. We can find the total mass of this by adding up the mass of the each hydrogen is 1.0078 U for one hydrogen. Multiply that by two, and this term will give us the mass of the two hydrogen atoms. And then we need the two uh, neutrons. Each of them has a mass of 1.0087 atomic mass units. Multiply that by two, add those numbers together, and you get 4.0330 atomic mass units. Now notice, this number, the mass of all the constituents, is greater than the mass of the, uh, the original helium nucleus. So one way to think about it is uh, the whole is not the sum of the parts. <laughs> In this case, 
the whole has less mass than the sum of the parts. All right, what's the mass defect? The mass defect is the difference between this energy after it's been split apart and this energy, or this mass, uh, before it's been split apart. So we just take the, the difference between these two and we get 0 0.0304 atomic mass units is the mass defect. And then the energy is this mass defect, delta M, times C uh, squared, but we can also, we can just use the conversion factor that there's 931.5 MeV per U. So that's this conversion factor right here. There's this much energy per this many atomic mass units. Alternatively, you can just go through and do it, do it yourself. You can put in this amount and then put in C squared, but we've already done the conversion for us to convert between MeV and atomic mass units. So that gives us 28.3 MeV as the binding energy of the helium nucleus. Yeah, the helium atom. The next slide is going to consider the binding energy per nucleon. How many nucleons are there in helium? Well, there's two protons, there's two neutrons, so there's four nucleons. And so this equation here, we take this binding energy, 28.3, divide it by four nucleons, and that gives us a binding energy of 7.8 MeV, binding energy per nucleon. So 7.08. This is the binding energy per nucleon in MeV per nucleon for all of the elements. And it's a very, very important figure in thinking about astronomy and other things. And we'll actually use it in this chapter and in the next chapter to study some, some fascinating behaviors. The helium-4 nucleus, that's this guy here. So what does a 4 mean? 4 means 4 nucleons, 2 plus 2, and 2 means the number of protons. And this point here is the 7.08 that we just calculated. Let me double check. I think it was 0 0.08. Yeah, 7.08 in the right, lower right-hand corner. So you can see that its um, binding energy per nucleon is, is higher than its neighbors. The binding energy per nucleon for, for hydrogen is quite low. Um, then other atoms, other, uh, other, th other, uh, other elements and isotopes. So the binding energy per nucleon, if we look at this, it looks like kind of a, well, it's a curve that reaches a peak right about here. And its peak value is about 8.7 uh, MeV per nucleon at about an atomic number of about 60 here. This is important because as you, as you proceed to higher and higher atomic numbers or nucleon numbers, atomic mass numbers, then, uh, especially if you get to about bismuth or so, the binding energy per nucleon is getting less and less. So these nuclei are getting less and less stable. And in fact, uh, above bismuth, they are unstable and radioactive. They spontaneously break up. And that's going to be the subject of the next section or two.